distinguished leaders of our country, senior leaders of the Rwanda Defense Force and the National and Rwanda National Police, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Commandant of the Senior Command and Staff College, graduating officers, other guests uh, who are here today with us, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I say good afternoon to you. I'm uh, pleased to be back in Nyachinama for this ninth graduation of the senior command and staff course. I want to start by congratulating all the graduating officers, your families, and the staff of the college for this important achievement. The continuous acquisition of knowledge and skills and the training of leaders in all fields is an important part of Rwanda's development trajectory. The armed forces are therefore no exception. This mission of this college is to educate the professional officer corps to serve our country's needs and aspirations. I'm pleased to hear of the college's efforts to modernize in keeping with global trends. The 47 officers graduating today embarked on this course with a clear understanding of the role of the Rwanda Defense Force as an integral part of our country's identity and transformation journey. You all have a part to play in ensuring that we reach our objectives. You have gained even more capabilities from this course and there for more is expected of you. I hope you will step into your new roles with a fresh insight and enthusiasm. There are important challenges that require your leadership as well as constant collaboration with other institutions. First, we must continue to consolidate the values of trust, consensus, and the accountability that characterize our society and to which our defense and security institutions have always actively contributed. 
Second, as 21st century officers, you will operate in a volatile geopolitical and security environment as part of an ever more interconnected world. Interconnected and equal as well. Uh, mark my word, and equal. And therefore, it adds uh, another dimension of responsibility. How do we, based on this knowledge and commitment, and even if limited resources, how can we raise ourselves to that level where we feel we are equal with others? This unequal or raising ourselves to the level where we feel we are equal to others is loaded with the many other things. And it's also an issue of mindset. It's an issue of choices we have made or we want to make going forward. It's an issue we have talked about several times in the past, and we may talk about it several more times in the future. But my point is it isn't just about talking. It's about doing the very things that will take you where you want to be. Let me digress a little bit here to elaborate uh, some few points. We were talking about modernization, we were talking about uh, the knowledge, acquired skills, and in the training in so many fields. I saw something lacking that I thought uh, I needed to mention here and make sure that those responsible will make uh, everything possible for what has not been happening to happen. You agree with me, the graduating officers here today throughout the many weeks you had here. Uh, same time, many others who were here before you. Something was lacking in understanding or utilizing IT. information technology. And um, because I, before I came here, I was asking uh, the leaders I met before I came here, the leaders of the our defense forces, uh, how much that is utilized here to help students uh, make broader studies and, and actually learn that uh, 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 learn to use the tools themselves here as part of the course and um, 
the answer was I understand it, I mean clearly that one which I didn't want to hear. So from today, going forward, those who are here responsible for that field, be it the Minister of Defense, the head leaders of RDF and uh, education or IT people. When I come back here and I find uh, that has not taken shape that it must, you will be in trouble. Then for unequal again, I meant, because here most of these, uh, I mean, all of us here are associated in one way or another. When I had uh, people talk about security studies, I, I imagined uh, it was security in a much broader sense. And uh, also when we talked about uh, geopolitics. Um, our country, I think we have a good understanding of who we are, where we are, where we are coming from, and where we are going and want to be. You know, there's something intriguing when we are talking about um, lack of security in some aspects. On the one hand, we work in a partnership globally. Again, there is that, an element, that element of unequal. That partnership, we get a lot of support, we work together, we address problems in areas where there is lack of security. But at the same time, in our relationships, in the way we do business, we find with the one hand, we are helping to deal with the matters of security. On the other, we are actually contributing to creating insecurity for countries, including our own. What do I mean? Particularly in our case, there have been even uh, people who graduated like today, as you have, who say run into problems of their own making. Sometimes, in actual fact, problems of criminal, criminal nature. And then same people run to countries called our partners. Tell a lot of lies. They are welcomed. These same people turn around and actually get involved in acts that cause insecurity for the country. Now, I'm saying this because it has more or less become a trend. And it doesn't matter how much time you take to explain, it seems to go on and on and on with our partners. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm just telling our partners that don't help on one hand to deal with the problems of security, meaning helping build capabilities and other things, and even support development, which is an integral part here of uh, the broader security we, we talk about. At the same time, give ground for insecurity to develop that will come and reverse what we have been building together, meaning our countries and then with our partners. <coughs> So those stud studies you are talking about, those who undertook security studies, I hope you just didn't go through it in a, a traditional sense without bringing it to bear on these realities that you and your country, men and women, go through every day. Otherwise, it will, uh, it, it's interesting because you read books, or you write books, you study. I was uh, talking to someone a uh, few days ago. They had been abroad studying. You know, in writing, there are thesis and uh, things like that. These are Rwandans. When they want to write something about Rwanda, in the context of the course that they undertook, the readers say of this course will tell them, no, not to touch it, not to talk about it, that they look for something else. The reason you would imagine was, would be to say you would be biased because that's where you come from. No. Because that would be a simpler problem to address. The one who will mark you and uh, who is supervising you can easily actually point that out and even penalize you for being biased. That's not a problem. But the reason is, no, they have set a narrative about Rwanda, for example, and they don't want anything deviating from that narrative they have created. If you write something and then you give facts, you give evidence, you destroy the narrative, that is not uh, something they would be happy about. So that's why they tell you, no, don't you? Uh... And then as I probed further, I found actually it is a common thing. It's not just one incident. Now, I'm bringing this out because when we are talking about geopolitics, we are talking about broader security studies, we are talking about, I mentioned, uh, the interconnectedness of the world, but also added how unequal it was. 
these things lie at the center of what I'm talking about. Or oh, these are elements that actually need to be looked at if we therefore want to create an equal, this time we want to create a world where we are equal. Equal shouldn't be just words, it should be demonstrated in real life. So you officers, I'm saying, don't just leave this place where you invested a lot of uh, efforts and studied hard and without looking at things in a way differently from how they have been looked at for many years, for decades. Uh, sometimes, in fact, things happening today taking us back centuries we've gone through. So I thought I needed to bring this up with you I could have said uh, much more, but uh, let me keep that for another time. So here we are on, uh, we find ourselves uh, with the uh, complex global challenges from terrorism to pandemics or natural disasters where we find no single country that can provide durable solutions on its own no matter how big or well resourced they are. You are therefore called upon to look ahead, to assess threats and opportunities, and to collaborate with peers in the region and beyond in order to address them successfully. Our defense force is already making a difference in several theaters because we are anchored in a tradition of discipline and duty while remaining dedicated to the well-being of citizens. Finally, there is a battlefield beyond the physical where RDF must always be ready to protect Rwanda's security and stability uncompromisingly. This is the struggle to instill the mind state amongst ourselves that Rwandans and Africans are as equally deserving as others in terms of freedom respect and prosperity. We must be diligent in securing better lives for our people and contributing to a better world for all. I wish 
to conclude by once again thanking the families and friends who are here to celebrate with the graduates. You have been the support network for our officers and by extension for our entire defense force. Congratulations, and we wish you all the best as you continue with your careers, careers in our defense force. I thank you for your kind attention. Have a good day.